Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I want to go over some simple collision fixes for your environments. Uh, that way you don't get stuck on any invisible collision uh, once you've imported some things and you want to kind of run around your space and experience it. Uh, so for this example here, I have this outside little patio uh, deck area and this grill um, and countertop basically has some invisible collision. Uh, and so I want to real quick show when I play, you'll see that I can't run over there and get near the grill. Um, and additionally, yeah, I can actually show it here in the collision viewport as well. Um, so if you're having this issue, uh, basically where you can't run into a certain area or so, it's probably because of the model that you brought in. And by default, um, it has a pretty simple collision being applied to it. It's just a bounding box. Um, and generally you'll have to either create your own or edit it in some way. Uh, so if I go up here to the view modes, um, and it currently we're in lit, I can switch over to player collision. And you'll see here that that table area has this large blocker. And if I click on it, it is the actual patio grill. Um, and you can see through here, the areas that I can walk are pretty much the, uh, the areas that don't of course have anything blocking them. Uh, so we want to pretty much fix that. So a couple of ways you can do it uh, is if I go in here, I can click on my patio grill itself and let that open up. It's going to load in my actual model and everything. And this is just the, the gray box, uh, like default shader, or the world grid shader on it. Um, but if you go up here and click on collision, um, you'll see that you can actually show your collision as well on this um, and yeah it's, it looks like that so far and then I actually want to uh, basically there's yeah a couple of ways that we can go about resolving this uh, so the the first way um, this is a, a super like like quick and um, dirty way is of course you can actually remove the collision uh, however, you don't want to do that because we're going to then run, be able to run through it and actually stand inside the grill. Um, so we probably uh, don't want to do that. Now, one thing to also consider is that collision is a expense a cost um, also. So if you are making a game and wanting to have the collision for your player and the player space, uh, then you need to factor in how expensive and high poly your collision is. Um, and I'll kind of get into that in a second as well uh, when I show some more complex collision. So uh, if I scroll down here on the right side, uh, you'll find the collision details tab. And there's yeah, a couple of things. You can do customized collision. Uh, you could actually bring in collision from uh, Maya as well or whatever modeling software. Um, and then the other thing, uh, the quickest way, at least for, uh, you, if you wanted to just, yeah, uh, roughly play around with it is that I can switch this collision preset, uh, over to, or the collision complexity, uh, sorry. Uh, you can switch this from project default to use complex collision as simple. And so what that is going to do now, um, is it's actually going to use the, so this is the simple collision is the green one that we see. And then the complex collision is actually going to use the geometry uh, that we brought in. So it's going to be the, the pink one that we're seeing, which is the actual like verts and everything of the model. Um, so that's the difference. And of course, like there is a yeah cost, like the green one's a lot more simplified, uh, less vertices. And the pink one has more, but it is more accurate as well. Now, it might not matter if we have something that is super low poly that we're just wanting to have collision on. But let's say that over here on these grill handles, uh, like some of these uh, knobs and all are a little probably too high poly for what we actually needed. So that would be where those unnecessarily uh, costs are coming in for the collision. Uh, however, what we can do here is right now we have it using the complex collision as simple. I can save that and you'll see that if I go over here to the player collision mode that now uh, if we yeah, basically see that separate, then it is looking basically like the models. And so if I 
uh, play from here. I can actually walk over here now and get around these. Um, we'll see that, yeah, there's something else that is actually blocking it, like this tree here. Um, that would probably need to, yeah, be resolved as well. Um, it's just like a placeholder. But, uh, yeah, at least this part so far has simplified collision um, to where we can actually walk through that area. Uh, now, like I said, that might not be what we actually want to do because it's maybe a little bit too expensive. So what are some other ways that we can actually go about setting up some collision for this? So I'm going to go back here and just go back to the project default. Um, and I want to show if we come up here and click on collision, uh, you can also find it down here, but there's the auto convex collision. And so what this is going to do is the, the collision that we have, um, the simplified green one, uh, it is actually, this is almost like an autogen collision tool. And so if we click here, uh, then you'll see that over here in the, uh, details panel, we're getting a convex decom decomposition uh, like area. And this is actually where we can make some uh, like changes with these just yeah, values and basically get uh, it to uh, bake out a collision for us. So I'm going to leave it at this for now and just hit uh, apply. And you'll see now that it's showing the updated collision. This might be perfect for what we're going for. You know, it keeps the, the edges pretty clean. Um, we're able to get under here if we needed to, which I don't think we do. Um, and generally like it, yeah, it has a, a rough indication of where everything is. Uh, and it looks pretty low poly as well. Um, nothing too expensive. So I think like maybe, you know, there's one or two areas here that are a little bit problematic, but um, overall, I think it's, it's pretty good. If I wanted to bring this up a little bit, I could hit apply or uh, five in the whole count and then hit apply again and it might yeah, rerun it and get a better result. But um, that's another way that we can now have collision to where if I play from here, I can now run in here again, just like we did before, but we don't have that super complex collision going on. Uh, now the other way that we can also do collision, um, just kind of showing a multitude of the uh, ways that you can actually do it, is you can also do it by hand. So what I can do is I can actually, I'm going to close that out, go up here to collision, and I want to remove collision. So now we actually don't have any collision at all. Uh, I can still use the complex because that's the, the geo. Uh, but right now we don't have collision. Um, what I want to do is I want to then click on this again, and then you can see that there's uh, the ability to add collisions. And so what I want to do is I'm going to click on Add Box Simplified Collision, uh, and you'll see that you actually get a box here, and I can actually move this around. Um, so pretty much just like modeling or so, I could basically just um, place collision where I wanted it to be. So let's say we like it here and I'm gonna click on that. And then I can hold alt and then drag and then we're getting a duplicate. Um, same thing with like placing and all. I can use the snapping and everything in here. Uh, but yeah, I can pretty much just do a super simplified uh, collision box and bounding up here. So let's say that we like that. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing and just get, yeah, four boxes. So this is probably going to be the cheapest way uh, that you're able to have collision in the scene um, and still being used. Now, of course, like I said, if we wanted to go underneath this table for any reason, or we had any other like further game mechanics that made it more complicated, this might not work. Um, but being that this is kind of like a, a walking space and the main goal is to like not be able to walk into those things, then that's pretty much what we uh, could achieve with this. Uh, now, additionally, like I said, if I wanted to, I could just do something like this um, and have this little bound here and then just duplicate it 
and make a, a very flat one for the actual uh, tabletop or countertop that we have here. Um, and that would pretty much do the job quite well. So there we go. Cool. Um, and yeah, the, the overlapping is fine. Um, pretty much like I could make it cleaner, but that should be uh, good. So now if I play from here, um, we're getting the same result. So uh, now I know this you know, tree had a bit of an issue with it. But if I go back over to the player collision, you'll see that um, it has the, the geo that I just placed. It's far more simplified, but that works pretty well. Um, let me move that out of the way as well. But yeah, so now you can see that the the collisions clean in that area and is working like we would want it to be um, so but yeah that's about it uh, that should be helpful at least for just doing some simplified collision in your space if you're really wanting to just be able to run through not have any issues with, like getting stuck with blockers or anything and not also wanting to spend a ton of time making it in your modeling software uh, that way you can actually just do it in unreal it updates real time to all of your instance props um, and it's yeah pretty solid so uh, that's about it for this one and i will see you next time